Joining us on the Heaster Automotive Group Hotline, the head coach, NC State, Kevin Keats. Coach, uh, before we start, thanks for thanks for coming on. But I need a favor from you, is if this is too much to ask. During press conferences that Joe Giglio attends, can you not, like not out of nowhere unprompted, give him credit? Because the ego on this guy following the Duke game was off the charts because you just kind of out of nowhere gave him credit for talking about quad one wins and ACC play and things like that. I was like, and I was in there, I was like, oh boy, here we go. Joe's going to be super hype about this. You Didn't know, do me any I, favors. I, I'm done fighting with him. Um, you know, besides <laughs> um, Joe Lenardi, he may be the quad one expert. Uh, he's definitely the quad one expert in this area. I can okay. tell you that now. And so, you know, give the man his props. Um, He's been on this quad one stuff for quite a, a long time, and I, I kind of realized it. And so what I have to do is I have to give him his props before he calls me and said, hey, guess what? <laughs> it's what it is, you know. Fair enough. Fair enough. Speaking of quad one wins, you, you got two in a row. You've had the week off. How do you feel about heading into this game against Miami, Kevin? Because this feels like old school ACC. You saw them once, good fight with them, played them hard. They're a good team, but now this is one of those, hey, let's run it back. I'll, I'll come see you at my place. Yeah, you know what's tough? Um, when you're playing good basketball, and every every coach, obviously, when you look at the schedule the, at the beginning of the year, you're like, man, there's a break in there. I need one. Um, but when you're playing good basketball and for us playing well at home against Duke and then going on the road, um, you know, playing against a, a tough place in Castle to play against Virginia Tech, you actually want to play on Wednesday. Like I wanted to play today, mm -hmm. um, but I don't have that opportunity. Um, you know, we've kind of split the week up, you know, took a couple of days off. Today is an off day for us. Um, you know, we got in there. Um, some guys um, who played a lot of minutes were off um, Sunday and Monday, and we worked out on our bench trying to develop some of those guys on Monday. And then yesterday we got in and we really worked on with everyone and took the day off. And then tomorrow and um, Friday we'll really concentrate on Miami. But it's a good team. Um, you know, Jim Larinag has done a great job. Um, you know, the backcourt's really, really good. But, you know, uh, Miller really hurt us. Uh, I thought we came out playing great in the first half and then kind of hit a wall. And at home they took over. And so it's a good team and it's another – Another really great quad one opportunity, maybe quad two. I know you'll tell everybody later on what it's going to be. You know, yeah. By the end of the year, I'm sure it'll wind up being a quality win for you if you can pay them back. That that that's the important part. You have to pay them back. You have to play with the same urgency that you did against Duke and Virginia Tech. I think that's been the most encouraging part for for this for me. What do you think of the way that you guys, particularly, started that Virginia Tech game? Just just hungry, angry, desperate. Yeah, you know, Joe, we were down. It's it's tough because we were down Dusan, and obviously you knew that um, that happened at Reynolds, and you know we were concerned about that. And then obviously, right, you know, at the Clemson game, at the end of it, you know, Jack Clark goes down, and he's been a big part of our offense. They were our two leading rebounders, and um, both of them were scoring a lot of points, at least around nine to ten points a game. And I have to give a lot of credit to Eb Dewana and Greg Gant for really stepping up and filling a role and doing it in a complete different way. Um, you know, they, those two guys were a little bit more score. Jack is more of a pick and pop. You know, when you look at Greg and EB, what they brought to our team is a lot of excitement, energy, and playing hard. Um, and, you know, they don't require shots. Um, they are guys who do a great job of screening and playing great defense. And, you know, it, it's really worked out for us. And typically that doesn't happen, replacing – guys who are a little bit more offensive minded for defensive guys. It doesn't work that way, but our team have really embraced that. And I'm, I'm proud of them for doing that. Kevin Keats joining us, NC state head basketball coach on the OG alongside Joe Giglio. I'm Joe Ovias. I, I am curious uh, as, as Joe talked about payback and, and league play and everything else. If you look at the standings, it is not your typical ACC, but I also have to untrain myself having been around here for 20 plus years that, you know, what is the ACC now? You know, and you, you bring in new guys to help yourself out. You're not alone. And that's going to affect the way that we have these perceived notions of, of the league. And look, I'll, I'll speak for fans here. They see the early portion with losses to Pitt, you know, a loss to Miami, a loss to, uh, loss to Clemson. But, and they're like, what? 
But then you look at the top of the standings, and these are the teams that are there. I think at one point your losses were to teams that were like 11-1 and one in, uh, in league play. So from, from the coaching perspective, how do you get that across to your team? That, hey, look, this is, this is a whole new ball game with these teams. You can't think about these squads the same way you might have in years past. Or do they even consider that anymore? You know, what we talk about is that you have 31 games. Forget the name. Forget mm-hmm. that it's Duke. Forget that it's Virginia Tech. Everybody has a quad associated with them. So you almost say, hey, this is a quad one opportunity. This team will be quad two. On the road, this quad is this team is quad three, because when you look at it, you know, and I and I was guilty of this um, when the net changed. I was one of those ones who were saying, if you finish ten and ten in the ACC, it should be an automatic. You should be in the NCAA tournament. Mm-hmm. And I, I've I've been proven wrong over several years, and here's why. Uh, you look at Wake Forest last year and their run, uh, thirteen. I won't say thirteen and seven. Maybe I'm wrong. Uh, I think someone was 15 and five and almost didn't make it. it it's not so much now, which is weird to say, um, ACC versus ACC. You look at all 31 games. The committee is now taking a hard look at every game you play. And so the games in November and December count just as much as your conference games. And if you don't beat the right teams, you're not getting in because your numbers just don't look good. They don't match. If you don't have quad one and quad two opportunities or – you have a lot of quad three and quad four losses. It really makes it tough on you. So I don't think that the ACC is down. I think around college basketball, there is not a lot of name recognition because people are shuffling from school to school. Mm-hmm. And so when you look at it, you know, you think about, you know, people say, hey, fans, it's Duke and they're coming in. Um, they've, they've changed a little bit also. And then you look at the recruiting classes. Um, you know, they, they, this recruiting class that came in, it's not the same recruiting class as maybe a Zion Williamson was in. And so that changes each team every year, depending on how good the high school kids are now. You know, Not all five stars are created equal. I don't know if you know that. Uh, Kevin Keats, NC State men's basketball coach, joining us here on the OGR. All right, let, let, let's do some, uh, let's do some uh, dot some I's, cross some T's here. You mentioned Dusan Mahorsic had the knee injury. I, I saw him with a brace. Now I've seen him without a brace knock on whatever wood you want or cross whatever fingers you'd like, but how close or when will we see Deuce on again? Well, you know, Joe, if it was up to him, he would have never put a brace on. Uh, You know, he is um, the ultimate warrior. He has spent um, probably eight to nine hours a day in the training room when he's not in – obviously, the class has just started back, so that will change. Um, You know, it's funny, when he went down, he targeted the, the Miami game to be back. Like, this is what he said. Now, of course, he's not a doctor or a trainer, uh, but I, I think he's progressing. He, he won't be ready for the Miami game. Um, okay. I don't know when he will play. I'm hoping in the next two or three weeks, but that's just pure, pure speculation on on my part. And here's why, you know, he had the same similar injury last year. It, t- it, was, it took less time, but the more you injure the same part, it takes a little bit longer to come back. All right, let's go through the list then. Jack Clark, sounds like a groin injury from the end of the Clemson game. You haven't had him for two games. What's what's his diagnosis? Yeah, I, I, I would say Jack is tough because we're going back trying to figure out if it's more groin or could it be something to do with his hernia. Um, he slipped a little bit, and you know we don't know when he's coming back, and I, I don't even want to put a timetable out there for him. Uh, the thing that I will tell you guys, and you guys have covered sports for a long time, some of the toughest things to come back is either um, a hernia, a hernia, or um, what is it? Um, a high ankle sprain. High ankle anything sprain. with your toes, mm-hmm. yep. screw you up. Yeah, yep. yep. So that, that's a it's a sensitive part because you could be you could be you could feel good and then it takes one cut and then you know I was trying to say hamstring. You know, sure. hernia and hamstring. I think both of those are the two hardest uh, injuries to make come back from. All right, let's do the last one. Is there a chance you redshirt Isaiah Miranda? There is. Is he hurt? He's banged up. Okay. Um, there is a chance that Isaiah Miranda could be a redshirt. Um, and I know, you know, a lot of people's out, you know, what happens with our, our fan base is it looked like the perfect storm. Um, you know, you get Dusan go down mm-hmm. and all of a sudden we get Miranda. But they looked at it as we got Miranda because Isaiah went down. 
you know, we had worked there for a long time. Isaiah was already coming. He was, he just had made his decision. He was close to making a decision and it just happened that way. Um, he's banged up, you know, his head is spinning right now. You know, think about this. Uh, we played against a really good player in Lively who's really talented, but he probably had the summer and he had all in the entire uh, preseason to get ready. Imagine a kid coming in right in um, December and jump, joining on a team as a freshman and trying to be ready to play. Uh, yeah. That's the tough part about it. And, you know, I just don't – I don't know if it's realistic for us to think that he's going to come in and be an impact guy. Could he help? Possibly. Um, but we haven't made the decision, but it is a possibility that he could redshirt. Have we really gone this entire conversation without bringing up DJ Burns? Is that the possible? Big boy. Is, that, is that possible? Is that possible? Fans certainly uh, love talking about DJ Burns, that's for sure. Uh, you, look, you, Kevin Keats joining us, NC State's head basketball coach. You, you had talked about guys stepping up in the absence of Mahorsich. Understandably, uh, you brought up the names that you brought up. But there is, there is a little bit of a spark that DJ Burns – I go back to that Duke game uh, when it was a slog early on. There was no scoring before Joyner, before uh, – Terquavion Smith got going, it was Burns who really gave you guys, I think it was six straight points he rolled off to kind of get things going. So, and the fans certainly pop when he does something great. I mean, he is the most popular guy in Raleigh. I mean, it's just, <laughs> you know, Joe, I know you think you are, uh, but you got no chance yeah. when it compares to this kid. I mean, neither one of you guys do. Neither do, neither do I. Um, <laughs> you know, he is, he's unique. He's different. He's got great touch. Um, I think he could be on Dancing with the Stars one day. Uh, he's got great feet. He's a tremendous passer, a uh, really good kid. And when we need a basket or, you know, this is what was lacking in this team last year. Mm -hmm. You know, we couldn't throw the ball inside to stop a run. You know, we would I would have to figure out how to get Eva to Quavion Smith a basket from a three or Darion Sebron a drive to the basket of Jericho, some type of mid-range shot. We couldn't stop runs. We couldn't, you know, throw the ball into anyone. And that's nothing to do with the guys we had. Well, he's a guy who can score with his back to the basket. He's unique. Um, you know, typically, you know, you see guys who would just bury you in the post and just turn around and shoot. He actually loves operating offside of the the paint and then making plays off of it. And, man, he – even at Virginia Tech, I didn't think he played well with his numbers, I meaning he took 10 shots and scored 11 or, you know, 12 points. But that stretch that he had was very important because we needed it at the time. Yeah, mm -hmm. We've gone this far. We haven't even mentioned the MVP of the damn team in, in Jarkel Joyner. <laughs> and Kevin Keats joining us here on the OG. Listen, you know, I, I get it. There's a lot of people out there, Kevin, who, who are kind of wringing their hands and wishing there was a time machine for college sports. Can we go back? Can we go back to the old days? But NIL is here, and it's, it's a part of the game now. And I look at Jarkel. I look at Jaquavion. I look at DJ Mahorsich. And these are all guys that, you know, quite frankly, you had to spend, not you, but the collective had to spend money on to get them to come here and play this season. And you look at the difference that someone like a fifth year player like Jarkel can make. And how do you argue against it at this point? I, I, I Maybe we're only talking about the bad parts and, and not potentially the good parts of NIL. You know, what we've done, um, Joe, in the last few years, when you look at Markel Johnson, um, you look at Darion Sebron, you certainly look at Tequavion Smith um, and the guys that we've had here. It's very attractive and to uh, any guard that wants freedom to be able to come here and play. And it was a perfect storm for us. Um, you know, Sebron decided to go to the league. We had moved him over to the point guard position. And um, obviously, uh, once he got in the portal, we'd hired Levi. We were able to talk to him. And I think the opportunity of being having a little bit more freedom than possibly where he was at and being able to play free and know that he could play alongside with Tequavion, which he's been really good for him. Like um, Jarkel Joyner has really accepted uh, the fact that he has a young kid that will take a lot of shots, but he's embraced him as more of a, as a friend and a little brother. And where his impact has come from is, you know, in the locker room, um, off the floor, and then certainly on the floor, he's become a very good leader. And times have changed. Um, you know, you have to now, because of the portal, because you can go out and get guys right away and they can play right away, as a coach, you're a little bit more picky. You get to pick some guys that or go after some guys that absolutely fit the way you play. And I don't know that I could have got a better point guard in the portal that fits the way we play. Uh, and, and here's where he's unique at. 
we talk a little bit about his offense, but he's probably our best defender. And I've said that between him and Casey Morsell, but he's so really good on the basketball that, you know, he kind of starts our defense. He's a closer too. He can finish games like we saw in Blacksburg. Yeah, he's, he's, you know, I thought both of those guys at the end, they were both eight for 10. They both stayed, some stepped up and made huge free throws to keep it at a two possession game. Kevin Keats, NC State head basketball coach. We appreciate the time. Uh, enjoy the rest of your off day. We'll talk to you later. Well, you know, when you say off day, it's an off day for the players, but not the coach. So, do you ever? Well, when coach. do you ever really have an off day? For being you honest, don't. you don't. And and listen, we don't. I said it last year. I don't deserve one. So I'm working, and um, I'm just uh, I'm gonna keep on pouring all my attention and hard work into the players, and you know, making sure those guys are having a great experience and having fun. Yeah, I was thinking about it. There, there's going to be an outdoor hockey game at Carter Finley Stadium on February 18th. Everybody's going to be having a great old time, and you got a you got a Carolina game to worry about the next day. You, you won't you know, even be able to enjoy that, right? You know that more than I do. I don't know anything other than Miami, and I promise you, I don't. I don't know who else we play after that. Yeah, uh, that's fair. That's fair. I totally yeah. get that, Coach. Yeah. I appreciate the time. Hey guys, thanks for having me on.